Madagascar is the fourth largest island in the world. Located off the east coast of Africa, it is famous for its unique flora and fauna. All expeditions to explore the island start from the capital, Antananarivo, also called Tana. Here the team organized the research permits and met the students who would accompany them on the expedition. The team headed to the area around Mahajanga, where the only known specimens of the target chameleon species, Fursifer Voltskovi, were collected by Alfred Voitskov in 1892. Since then, the species has never been found again, and no one knew if it still exists. The team took a 15-hour drive north, crossing Madagascar's sparse hinterland. Life here is concentrated along these main roads. On the way, the team also crossed Madagascar's famous Red River, the Betsy Buka. Madagascar's largest river, it is stained red by tons of sediment, left loose by deforestation. Satellite images show the country bleeding out. Late at night, the team arrived at the first location, north of Mahajanga. From here, they would take day trips to the last forest patches in order to look for the lost species. Most of the country is completely deforested and cultivated. An old mango tree yields the first chameleons. This is one of the largest species of chameleons, Fursifer ustaleti. Here we see a male courting a female. Chameleons realize quickly that humans do not want to harm them and are usually easy to handle. Zebu cattle are still an important means of transport across Madagascar. Slowly but steadily, a zebu cart manages steep trails or even river crossings. However, not all zebu are tame, and some need to be guided by long ropes, as the team witnessed. Oh. 
Once the road became too bad to pass, the team had to continue on foot, still in search of appropriate habitat for chameleons. In rural Madagascar, life can be simple, without electricity or running water. So the river is the place to wash, to refresh, and to get drinking water. The team took a rest in a small village and was even allowed to look inside one of the local huts. In a dry forest, the team found a rare chameleon, Fursifer Angeli, a subadult male and a female demonstrating their remarkable tongue hunting mechanism. Fursifer Angeli is closely related to the popular panther chameleon, Fursifer pardalis. The female shows an unusual defense behavior toward an approaching male, showing the tip of her tongue and enlarging her throat with the tongue bone. Most research on reptiles and amphibians is done at night when these animals are most active and avoiding the heat of the day, including this western or brown tree boa, Sanzinia voluntani. A disturbed mouse lemur shows its anger unmistakably. Following the advice of locals, the team found a limestone cave and, as rain began to fall and drip from the roof, tiny frogs emerged. These are members of the genus Anilani, a very poorly known group of frogs with great potential for new species. This is a first and unexpected discovery from the expedition. The search for Fursifer Volskovi continued, leading to a new dry forest. With temperatures at around 30 degrees Celsius even within the forest, and the lack of humidity even within the litter layer, expectations for finding anything interesting were very low. Yeah, what's very interesting is that there are little sunflakes in What are you doing? I'm just looking for the brocchia. We are just uh, there's a small places. It's a uh, good forest. You can find the brocchia to uh, to carry. <laughs> Nicht. 
The leaf chameleons of the genus Brachysia are unusual as they are small and inhabit the leaf litter in the forest. With their bizarre appearance, they are perfectly camouflaged. This group of chameleons is sister to all others and may reflect something of what the ancestor of chameleons looked like. They have the characteristic tongue, forked feet, and independently moving eyes of other chameleons, but can only change color weakly. Yeah. Continuing their search, the team chartered a boat to get to a remote area in the hopes of finding undisturbed forest. Mangrove forest protects the coastline from cyclones and tsunamis and is home to mudskippers and fiddler crabs in high densities. Here, too, the team came across a small village. Yeah. People here live off what they can cultivate or what they can reap from the forest. Despite the intense poverty, the people are very kind and even help these crazy foreigners search for good forest. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly, they show the team Tenrex that they have caught recently, which will soon be on the menu. Sadly, here too there was no forest left. The team was forced to change locations once again. On the other side of the Betsy Boca Delta, satellite images promised some small patches of dry forest remaining. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> In Katsepi, the team met Lucian. This young boy had lost his father to suicide a year before. Comment tu t'appelles? Je m'appelle Alicia. Uh huh. Et tu as quel âge? During their short visit, the team did their best to entertain him and also to help him and his mother, 
by providing a small sum of money which would suffice to put him through school for a few years. The team managed to hire the only available car in Katsepi and drove, fully packed and very slowly, toward the coast. Finally, here they found nice dry forest and were greeted by curious brown lemurs. Shifaka, another kind of lemur, are also found in this forest. Searching for chameleons by day is very difficult, but there is always a chance of finding Burkesia species in the leaf litter. Carlos, what are you doing there? <laughs> Here there dwells a different species, Brachesia brigui. The heart of this forest is a large baobab, which is protected by a thadi, a local Malagasy taboo. The Malagasy student, Nsara, explains. The Baobaba is like a sacred tree here. Um, it's, it's taboo to pee and to poop here <laughs> and around the forest. Uh, I have this uh, place here with uh, a lot of small money. Uh, 10 ariari, 20 ariari and uh, 2 pearls with, uh, I don't know, some solution. That night, the moment the team had been hoping for finally happened. The excellent Malagasy guide Angeluc found the first specimen of the lost species, Versifer Voltskovi. He first found a female. Females of the species have never been seen before. When stressed, they show a beautiful black-white pattern and two to three red dots along their flanks. <laughs> Fala vitanawa, 
Sukumia dana tima meler mia finira tima re senar nusio fitia vako na wa demu dia we tua re tungu cho si ari keli sunya de chupaki. Soon a male was located. Males are nearly twice the size of females, and of totally different morphology and coloration. After more than one hundred years, this spectacular species was finally rediscovered. <laughs> Taratandu sa usa mi luko e mune mune tampu na karate vezi vezi chimete mi tumbu na renya iyala salaviti sasa mje funira love tinar na uti si vuf kato kila la. Gulungulia wana tikia ula vikia vana timura makala warna wa Fala vita na wa Shukumia dana tima mele rimia finira tima reshe na nusio Vitia vako na wa Demu jawe tuwa retungu cho Siyari jeni sunya utechupake Devu jawe tuwa retungu cho Siyari jeni sunya utechupake Rakutavu na vomara ndai na mzara tumle matijupe Fenu fenu na menu tifumi tura ramu masu miru chaki Mula lafu tamansi laetani fudi na laetani ya fia kwe After their success, the team visited Ankarafansika National Park and enjoyed two days of relaxed herping. There they found Lyheterodon, Europlatus, and a host of other reptiles and amphibians found only on Madagascar. Although the expedition was a success, and the target species was rediscovered, the team realized once more how endangered Madagascar's unique wildlife, and especially its reptiles and amphibians, really are. It required immense effort to find a small patch of dry forest, the last remaining fragments of habitat of Furcifer Voltskovi. Its range is presumed to be extremely small, and diminishing all the time. The lifestyle of rural Malagasy people requires large quantities of wood or charcoal, and the forest areas are shrinking at unrestrained speed. The entire 15-hour drive back to Tana was through deforested and infertile land. The fault, however, lies not with these people who are among the poorest in the world, 
They follow a lifestyle and traditions that they have practiced for hundreds of years. It will require international efforts and an improvement to the political landscape of the island nation to protect this wildlife and these people in the long term. And this is urgent, as there is still so much left to discover. <laughs> Ulala, tamansi, latani, futi, na latani, afi, afi.